Welcome in, along with former Oklahoma State quarterback Zach Robinson. I'm Steve Palazzolo. Today discussing the PFF College Game of the Week. It is your Oklahoma State Cowboys taking on the Texas Longhorns. Of course, it's all brought to you by Eckridge. We'll get into your exploits at Oklahoma State in a minute, but it's all brought to you by Eckridge, the official smoke sausage of the college football playoff. And if you're at the game, check out at halftime, there will be a million dollar challenge, something that you can still sign up for at all of these various locations. And of course, you could still sign up for the national championship over at EckridgeFootball.com. So pay attention at halftime, somebody's gonna be throwing a football for a million dollars, all powered by Eckridge. You get any uh, flashbacks, any uh, old memories when it comes to, you know, maybe games against well, Texas? Unfortunately, we did not beat Texas when I was there. They uh -huh. had our number. They had uh, they had Vince Young, Colt McCoy. We had some shootouts against them. One game we were up, I believe, 35-14 going in the fourth quarter and could not close the deal. So, Man, lots, lots and lots of missed opportunities. Zach Robinson, he came out. He had four interceptions. He made a couple mistakes trying to squeeze the ball in against Texas defenders, and they made some plays on him. I think the... Uh, the speed of the Texas defense might have caught Zach off guard just a tad. The memories of Texas are not all good. I hear you blaming your defense, and that's what I'm well, hearing we when couldn't, you say that. We couldn't convert uh, in the red zone, so we got we got to take some blame too. Full team game, team game, and it's, it's good. It's nice of you to uh, to take the blame there as well. All right, let's look to this week's matchup. Let's start on Texas' side of the ball when they have the football. Starting with with quarterback Sam Ellinger, he's really been the best quarterback we've seen at Texas in a long time, maybe since Colt McCoy, 88.5 grade so far this season, continues to get better. What have you seen from Ellinger, El Ellinger so far on tape? That's the thing, he continues to get better and he continues to just throw the football better, more accurately, he's hitting the downfield shots. He's our top graded uh, 20 plus thrower, just above Will Greer, he's been incredibly efficient, almost hitting 50% of those throws. So uh, he continues to get better. He's got some great playmakers that we'll mention, but uh, just comfort in the pocket, making those throws, because we've seen what he can do when he takes off his legs, but the comfort in the pocket and throwing accurately has been the story. Yeah, and the guys that you mentioned, it's Colin Johnson, who's just a big monster on the outside, and then Will Jordan Humphrey, who's another bigger receiver, but he does most of his work in the slot. He's got the 12th most slot yards in the entire nation right now so that must help Ellinger a little bit to those you know thrown to those big body receivers. Absolutely both those guys you look at catch radius on Colin Johnson and then Will Jordan Humphrey after the catch screen game uh, he's a threat to take that thing 15 20 yards every time he touches so uh, and, and then you look on the other side Oklahoma State one of their weaknesses is missing a lot of tackles so that's going to be something to watch is can they tackle can they defend the deep ball they're allowing the 113.4 pass rating on 20 plus throws which is the worst in the in the Big 12 so that's going to be the story of this Oklahoma State defense is containing those guys tackling and stopping the deep ball. All right, man, I think I finally got it figured out. I'm going to throw the ball through the kitchen window, off the doghouse, rocketing up and off the bird feeder all the way through the target. I don't know, man. That's a really tough angle. I think you got to ditch the bird feeder. How long did that take you? A couple hours. You know you could have just gone off the porch column? Man, that's a good-looking plate of food. The Eckridge Million Dollar Challenge is back. Enter at EckridgeFootball.com for your chance to win. What do you think? <laughs> Seriously, dude? Yeah, so on paper, or on a computer screen at least, it's not a great matchup because of the missed tackles you mentioned, the third most in the Big 12, the deep passing that you mentioned, and also we mentioned a little Jordan Humphrey in the slot. They're allowing a passer rating of over, over 115 when targeting the slot. That's Oklahoma State's defense. Who's their best player? Calvin Bungage? Is that the guy we were looking at before that's like, all right, this is the guy that Texas probably needs to slow down? Yeah, he's the guy that needs to disrupt the game up front. He's, uh, you know, they move him around to a different, different spots, and um, he, he kind of is the high-energy guy on that defense, so he's going to have to play really well. Uh, it's going to be a night game in Stillwater, Steve. It's homecoming, so it's going to be rowdy, and we're going to need the defense to, to play a huge game. I think Calvin Bungage is going to be that guy. Did you just drop a we on us? We'll let that slide. We'll let the we I, slide. That's okay. We never, I, I, think I, I think I got that a lifetime we. That's all right. That's, that's a lot. I, I went to UMass Lowell, so we don't have a we to, to actually fall <laughs> back on. Bundich has a team high 18 total pressures. Let's go to your side of the ball. Now, Oklahoma State's offense, Taylor Cornelius, uh, took over this year for Mason Rudolph, 80.3 overall grade. Three games, though, under a 60 grade. So it's been a bit of an up and down ride. What have you seen from Cornelius? Yeah, a little up and down. Um, you'd like to see him just play a clean game. You know, they, they love to throw the football down the field. 
and some of those deep shots he's taken, he's made most of his mistakes. He has seven interceptions on 20-plus throws. Uh, the, the best thing that he does if things aren't there is take off and go. He's got great mobility for a big guy his size. So you want to see him play a clean game throughout. They've got a great receiver on the outside, Tylen Wallace, which you'll mention here in a second. But those two guys got to get it going against the te Texas secondary that mixes up their looks a ton and uh, do a lot of good things. Let's get right into the scheme. We'll talk about Wallace in a sec. But schematically, Texas did a pretty good job last year. They're going to come in with the same game plan. What did they do against Oklahoma State's offense last year in their matchup? You would think it would be very similar. They had a lot of three-man fronts. Uh, drop eight and, and basically playing, playing too high coverage, daring them to run the football, and they could not run the ball. So Justice Hill getting him going is going to be a big thing to just get them out of that three-man front that uh, haunted them last year. Mason didn't. Mason Rudolph didn't play the best game. Was forced in some throws. I'm sure he just got uh, you know agitated, wanted to take some shots. But uh, the way that they just played it, they said, "Hey, we are not going to get beat deep." I'm assuming that they're going to try to do the same thing this year. And then if they do try to throw the ball down the field, it is Tylen Wallace, who's got an 84.8 overall grade. I think more importantly, though, he leads the nation in contested catches. Those catches when you've got a receiver or a cornerback just draped right on you. You've got no separation. He's still going up and making catches. That he has 16 of those contested catches this year. And then he'll line up opposite Chris Boyd. That's the top cornerback on Texas. Wallace always lines up on the right. Boyd lines up on the left side of the defense. So they will match up pretty much every snap this week. It's going to be one of the best matchups in all of college football. Yeah, no, it'll be great, especially when those guys are to the field. You see a lot of just one-on-one -on -one coverage to the field, and that's when they're going to have to take their deep shots. We mentioned the two high coverages that they play. Sometimes they'll mix it up and they'll keep the safety inside. So that's when they need to hit, a, hit the deep shots. And uh, that, that's going to be kind of the story of the game is can they get those 20-plus plays not have to just sustain drives running the football. So Wallace versus Boyd, one of the better matchups. The other guys to really keep an eye on, Caden Stearns, the true freshman safety. He's, he's unbelievable, yeah. He's, he's the highest graded player on the Texas defense right now, 81.6, four interceptions, two pass breakups, one of the best true freshmen in the entire country. And then you have to keep an eye on Charles Omenehu. He's got 19 pressures. That leads the team. So, Zach... Give me a prediction. What's happening in Stillwater on a Saturday night? The team's been struggling a little bit. I think this is the time that they get it done. We need to beat Texas. I dropped we again. I but, saw that. Uh, I do think night game, homecoming, I think that they get it done, and uh, it's going to be a big upset. So there you have it for uh, Unbiased, Zach Robinson. Very I'm Steve unbiased. Palazzolo. This whole PFF College Game of the Week has been brought to you by Eckridge, the official smoke sausage of the college football playoff. Don't forget to pick up your Eckridge smoke sausage at your local grocery store for this weekend's tailgate or home gate party. And be sure to visit EckridgeFootball.com for great game day recipes and to enter their season-long million-dollar challenge.